On Power Talk, we are pleased to be joined by John Gashora, who's the Group Managing Director and CEO of NCBA Bank, as well as the Chairperson of the Kenya Bankers Association. John, thank you so much for joining us. It's good to have you. Thank you. Good to be here, Yvonne. Let's talk about um, you know, your performance for the first quarter of the year. That's up until March 2023 posted some impressive numbers. Um, a profit uh, before tax of 6.4 billion, profit after tax of 5.1 billion. Um, and this increase has been due to customer numbers. Yes, indeed. We have yeah. seen uh, really good growth in customer numbers. Mm -hmm. uh, our deposits are growing steadily. Uh, we hit half a trillion in deposits, so 500 billion shillings in deposits. Our asset base is up 7% year over year at 630 billion. Uh, and indeed also our performance of digital lending, which we're very strong in, we saw a 37% growth to 223 billion uh, in lending during that time or in disbursement during that time. So a really good growth all across our metrics. Let's talk about the digital banking yes. solutions because you've mentioned that 223 billion disbursed in just the first three months of this year. That's a big number, but, but John, Customers continue to complain about the cost um, you know, of, of digital lending, digital loans. Indeed, it's become a subject even for the yeah. government um, talking about this and how to make this more affordable yeah. uh, for Kenyans on this platform. How can that happen now? Oh, absolutely. It, it continues to be a concern. Yeah. And I think, as you saw last year in September, we revised the pricing for Fuliza. So out of that 223 billion, about 190 billion was actually full ease of disbursements. Now that has seen very good growth since we revised the pricing. And now, as you know, in Fuliza, you don't have to pay interest for three days. It's pretty much free money for three days because Fuliza was supposed to help people finish their transactions and then load back uh, in a day or two. So really, I think the pricing has been revised. We are sensitive to it. We continue to be. Um, and uh, I must say digital credit has become very affordable. And that's perhaps what, we co what, uh, what contributed to that growth that we have seen. Yeah, I, I also want to um, now perhaps have you wear the hat of KBA chairperson. Um, you know, banks continue to post profits, not just yes. NCBA. Uh, several of the other counterparts posting billions uh, of shillings in profit. And most of that is due to customer growth numbers. But for the customers, life continues to be tougher for them. So the micro um, you know, situation suppresses the customers. There's rising inflation. There's the increase in CBR, although it's been maintained uh, you know, for this month. And that just makes life harder for customers. And so they ask the question, John, how are banks making all of this money? Um, you know, and your customers continue to, to feel the rising cost of living. What's... What's the correlation there and what can banks continue to do yes. to pass on some of those benefits to your customers? Let me start by saying this, that banks, first of all, are the biggest employer, private employer in this country. We employ about 35,000 people in this country. We are also the largest sector when it comes to tax payments. Again, we pay about, I believe, 25 to 30% of taxes paid by business in this country are paid by banks. So banks really do contribute to the growth of the economy. So we should not feel bad that banks are doing uh, quite okay. But that said, banks uh, they usually lag a bit of the economy. Why? Because, as you've seen, the interest rates have been rising. And when interest rates are rising, then banks will report a bit more money. What I really encourage and I see with the banking sector here is that if you look at what you call private credit growth, how much we are lending to the private sector, the MPC just came out with the numbers. It has grown 14, 14%, which is a significant growth year over year, which means that even though we're making the profit, we are indeed supporting uh, the private sector to grow, yeah? which is a good thing. I would feel very bad if all that growth was coming from maybe lending to government. But clearly the numbers do show that we are supporting the private sector grow. Now, I also want to say this, Yvonne. No country has ever grown without a strong banking system. So as a country, we should be happy that we have strong banks, we have strong banking system, because it's through that that we are able to finance large projects by government, we are able to finance large industries, large manufacturing, and also, as I talked about the digital lending that we do, 
a lot of parents depend on that to pay school fees for their children. So it's good to have a strong banking system. Okay. Yeah. Let's talk about the, um, the other side of benefits to customers, and that is sustainability. Um, you know, no organization can, uh, can function without, you know, giving back to the communities from which they thrive and extract yes. uh, their resources. Um, tell us about some of the sustainability initiatives that NCBA is um, involved in. Yes, yeah, so, so NCBA, we, we look at some sustainability along many, many, many levels, yeah? as defined by the United Nations, one of them is gender parity. We have 51% of our staff are women, so that's something that we talk about because we're proud that, uh, that we're playing a role in that. The second thing I like to say is that we also support a lot of students, I know people don't know that, but we are financing over 100 students today in schools. We do it through various foundations, but we identify which students are being supported by NCBA. So that's the other thing that we do. Certainly, I think, uh, change the story uh, that we have done together with the organization here, the, uh, the, the Rural Media. Mm -hmm. We've worked together before, and working together with organizations of like mind, we have catalyzed the planting of uh, seven million trees. And beyond that, we have a tree nursery uh, that we have established at Karura Forest with a million seedlings being planted. So really contributing to the whole idea of tree planting that the president has talked about. Our role in affordable housing, uh, we have been a great shareholder of Kenya Mortgage Refinance Company. We indeed were the arrangers for the bond to finance Kenya Mortgage Finance Company. Um, and we continue uh, to participate in affordable housing programs. Indeed, we have announced our financing of 105% for affordable housing uh, with an interest rate of 9% uh, mm -hmm. and encourage uh, people to take advantage of it. We view all this as being part of sustainability. Lastly, is that NCBA supports junior golf in this country. Uh, we started when you would go to any golf field, you'd find maybe two kids. Today, when we have an NCBA junior golf tournament, it's always oversubscribed by over 200 kids in Kenya, in Uganda, in Tanzania. Uh, the last one that we had in Uganda, we had uh, 10 countries participating. So you can see these are some of the things that we've been for the future. And I must say, on the golf side, one of the things that NCB has started to do mm -hmm answer to the call from the CES for sports about Talantahera yeah. is that we have contributed, we raised money, contributed to the Kenya Golf Union to support local golfers so that they are paid for playing golf. And indeed, we have seen a number of them win cash prices anywhere from 20000 to 150000 for playing for two days on a weekend. Because yeah. we are saying that talent must also be rewarded. Mm, absolutely. Um, what's your uh, you know, economic outlook uh, for the country? We are you know, right on the verge, you know, finishing this uh, current financial year, going into a new one. Uh, there's much talk about uh, the many provisions in the finance bill, um, including, of course, a lot of other events that are taking place, even in the United States, uh, with their conversations on their debt ceiling. Um, where do you see uh, the country over the next year? And what are going to be some of the defining factors for our economy? Look, I think the, the, the one thing to appreciate is the global economy is highly interconnected. And the outlook for the economy globally remains very uncertain. The war in Ukraine is continuing. As you talked about the United States, we have seen a number of banks fall in the United States. We have seen a bank like Credit Suisse fall. Um, and here at home, we have seen inflation, uh, you know, coming close to 10%. I know it has started to come down. Uh, but there are a lot of pressures uh, everywhere. And I think the tax conversation that's ongoing is also certainly going to add to the inflation conversation. So it's, it's easier for someone to say it looks like gloom. But what I like to say is this, that economy goes in cycles. I think here we went through a tougher time. We had elections last year, which likely went smoothly. We had a new government come in, smooth transition of power. Our institutions work and they show that they work. I think when you look at all those things, there's reason to have optimism yeah, in this economy. So for us, uh, our view is that Kenya will grow at a rate of about 5.1% this year. That's our projection, mm -hmm. uh, which is a very healthy growth in this environment. We have a very strong and resilient private sector that continues to work. Uh, the government, even though there's a lot of debate about the tax 
tax bill and sorry the finance bill and other conversations i think they have shown their willingness and they have people who are working every day to ensure that the plan, as they call it, is being executed. They talk about affordable housing, they talk about education, they talk about health care, affordable health care, all those things. You can see the government is making the plan. And I think once the short-term uncertainty is cleared, uh, I think we'll be in very good footing. Mm. What I like to remind Kenyans is that historically, the first year of any government in Kenya has been tough. Why? Because they're coming up with a new budget. Yeah. And the previous budget coming to an end, and the programs that were being executed for the previous government don't get the immediate priority to when a new government comes in. So this is something we have seen before. And when you look back, you'll see every first year of a new government, we go through this cycle. OK. Um you know, we have to talk about uh, a matter that's been uh, an issue of public debate, even in political circles. Perhaps you may not ever have uh, thought about this happening in that space. And that is the tax waiver um, of 900 million shillings during the NIC-CBA merger that now, you know, got us NCBA. Yes. Um, what more can you tell us about this? I understand the matter is in court, but, um, you know, what's your comment around this? Because it's become quite an issue, even of political debate. Look, it's a matter I love to discuss, but as you say, being in court, um, I couldn't discuss it on public TV. Is that all? <laughs> That's all I can say. <laughs> what happens if the court decides uh, that you should be? Because now there's an injunction. Look, um, what I'll say is that NCBA respects the laws of the country and we play by the rules. So as I've said before, whatever decision the courts make, we shall abide by it, 100%. We'll leave it at that. Thank you so much, John Gashora, the group CEO of NCBA. Thank you for joining us on Thank Power you Talk. Thank you.